Well, did you see oil earlier today yeah. above $102 a barrel? It closed at 99.64, but nonetheless, it's an interesting time to have a fight like big oil versus renewable energy as crude prices soar. There is a new bill on the House, there you're looking at crude oil, that would end tax breaks for big oil companies while giving incentives to renewable energy sources, sort of a taking it from one, giving it to another. Is this the best way to tackle higher prices at the pump? We welcome Representative Gabrielle Giffords, a Democrat from Arizona, joining us now from Capitol Hill. Good to have you. We appreciate you coming on. I appreciate it, and I'm really excited because just minutes ago we passed this legislation oh, really? that I truly see as the Apollo mission of the future. And it does precisely what you talked about. Instead of subsidizing the oil companies by about $17 billion, we're going to be taking those that money and investing it in renewable energy sources. So I'm really excited about it. Well, now it's one thing to take money. You're, you're, you're essentially switching tax breaks from one enter group of enterprises and giving those tax breaks to another. You're not talking about outlays of federal tax dollars, correct? That's correct. Right now, we have a, a plan that we're subsidizing the oil and gas companies. And as you mentioned, at, a, at $102 a barrel, the oil and gas companies are doing pretty well. Now, I come from Arizona, where we have about 300 days of sunshine every single year. If you looked up in the sky and saw someone running around pouring out gallons of gasoline, would all be with buckets picking it up. This is essentially what's happening with solar energy. Being able to harness the power of the sun that comes up almost every single day in the southwest, or wind areas in different parts of the, the country, or you know thermal, it depend, you know depending on the part of the country you're in, really makes sense. And I think it's just a much better investment for our dollars. Representative, some of the critics of this bill have a problem with a part of it that would repeal what's called Section 199, domestic manufacturing deduction, for meaning getting rid of about a three percent cut uh, tax break for the large integrated oil companies. Okay, so that wouldn't include some of the smaller independent oil companies, among them Citgo, which of course is controlled by Venezuela's PDVSA, their state-owned oil company. What is your response when people get very uh, upset about that? Well, again, I, I really see the oil industry, oil industry doing very well for itself. I mean, my concern is about global warming, about energy independence, so we're not dependent on dangerous and unstable regimes. I'm concerned about good jobs here, good technology, and we're going to have to do that one way or another. This is a perfect avenue. This, this bill has passed essentially in the same form twice last year. We just passed it again a few minutes ago. I hope the Senate moves on it because we have to pull our dependency off of this foreign oil source and stop subsidizing the oil companies. So, you know, you can nitpick a piece of legislation to death, but I truly feel like this is a good piece of legislation. Okay, well, nitpicking, we're talking about a lot of cash here, so I don't think the word nitpicking uh, falls in order. But just to play the, the oil side for the second, they say, hey, look, we are U.S. companies. We need to spend a lot of money to get oil. A lot of that oil, by the way, is not just from overseas, it's here. And in order to do that, we need tax breaks that help us to go out. We're not taking subsidies directly from the taxpayer. We're getting tax breaks in order to explore more and get us off of that foreign oil. How do you respond? You know, the faster we get our dependency away from foreign oil, the better. And we can continue to talk about other ways of going out and, and getting oil so we can buy more time. But the best way to do it is passing legislation like this, which allows tax incentives for, uh, for homeowners, but also for companies. For example, in Arizona, a project was just proposed. The largest solar plant in the world, 70,000 homes will be fueled by this solar power plant. The issue really comes down to these tax credits. This project will not move forward because the tax credits are due to expire in 2008. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do it, we have to do it. The time is now. And I fully support the legislation. And by the way, you know, we have a, a lower band on the, on the trigger that says that it would uh, tax oil companies about $17 billion over 10 years. Just so our viewers know, at least one oil company, ExxonMobil, made about $10 billion a couple of quarters ago in profit. So, you know, it, that's just... Of course, there are the years perspective. and years where they don't make any profit. We have to emphasize that as well. That's, that's happened before, too, Congresswoman.
you know, the reality is this world is a very different world than it used to be. We have countries like China growing. We have countries like India. All of those folks want to have cars. They want to have the quality of life that we have in this country. The planet cannot sustain that much energy being consumed. So renewable energy makes all the sense. And those civilizations that historically have led in technology have been the civilizations that have been the most successful. Right. We need to lead. That is why we need to push this legislation through. Representative Gabrielle Giffords, thank you for thank joining you us on much. Fox Business. Bring some of that sunshine east, could you? I try. I do my best. <laughs> thank you very much, Thanks very much. Well, well Robert see. Gray has the very latest in the extended session. And a lot of things are happening in the after hours, so stay tuned. We've got that next on Fox Business.